Μένει στην Ευρώπη, ένα είναι από την Γαλλία, η κοπέλα είναι από την Κίνα, αλλά μένει στη Έμενε τόσα χρόνια στη Σκοτία. Θα έρθουν να μας μιλήσουν, θα μιλήσουν και να συζητήσουμε σχετικά με το μάγκα. Γιατί πώς βλέπουν αυτά τα πράγματα, γιατί γνωρίζετε ότι κάθε άνθρωπος από κάθε γωνιά του κόσμου έχει την τέτοια κουλτούρα, έχει το δικό του τρόπο σκέψης και αυτό είναι πραγματικά καλό το να μπορέσουμε να έχουμε αυτή την ελεπίδραση ώστε να ανοίξει και το δικό μας το πλέον. Να δούμε λίγο δύο φορά κάποια διαφορετικά perspective σημαίνει να χρησιμοποιώ την αγγλική με την ελληνική αλλά και την ελογρασία σας αναγκάζομαι αυτήν την πράγμα έτσι καλά. Η συνέντευξη θα διεξευθεί στα αγγλικά και ήρθε η ώρα να καλέσουμε στον πλατό τον Γάλλο καλλιτέχνη Νίκολα Σάς. Νίκολα, please come to the stage. Ε, όχι. Τα τέξι μας δεν Nicola, don't don't be shy, please. Come on stage. And yes, Ali. Ena kirokrot, ena kirokrot, ena kirokrot. Because you see, I'm going to have us. We want to come to the school of film. I think we have the best program that's the film of the year. Now I'm going to derogate you guys, huh? Sit here. Say it like a microphone. I'm gonna take a beer afterwards. Yeah, if you, if you are a good boy, I'm gonna give you, but not beer. Okay. You will drink Gratina. Okay. Okay. All right, Key. You already know that. <laughs> okay. Would you like to introduce uh, yourself to our uh, friends? Who you are? Okay. Say a few things about your uh, yourself about. Okay. 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 But ladies first. Ladies first. As always. Hello. Hi, my name is Isha Lee. Um, I live in Scotland. Um, so I came to uh, this show. And I'm quite impressed actually, it's uh, so good so far. And so what I do normally is, um, I, I kind of, sometimes I do manga, sometimes I do comic. So at the moment I'm working on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And that is kind of a mix of manga and uh, comic because the publisher want to attract younger audience. So I do like a slightly manga style. And also I, I work for DC, I work for some French publishers. Um, yeah, generally that's what I do, and I do a lot of uh, how to how to draw and the books as well. Monsieur Nicola. Okay, everybody, hello. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Nicolas Sauge. Uh, I come from France. I'm a comic book artist. Uh, with a French, uh, good French editor, Le um, I've come here thanks to uh, friends from uh, uh, Manga Tellers, uh, who I've met in Paris in a convention, where they really made a, an impression on me with a good talk. And they said, well, do you want to come? So here I am. And um, let's say I'm very passionate about animation and uh, the work I try to do in uh, comic books is trying to combine um, this this feel of animation, what I mean, animation look, looks like, and try to tell big stories, uh, the, the kind of stories I, I find in manga that I really love, with lots of characters, lots of adventures, meetings and everything, and with the look of manga, but in a comic book. So that's the stuff I like to do, and among other things. Okay, would you like guys to elaborate a little bit about uh, your work, about uh, your art, about what you are doing, how you are doing, and uh, which were your, um, your motivation to start working on this field? How I started it? Tell us right. a bit more details about your work. Right, um, how I started. So I always like to 
draw when I was a kid, of course, like a lot of oh, yeah, the people here. Yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't go to art college and I didn't learn to draw, but because it's always a hobby, so it kind of came naturally. I just keep practicing myself until I got to you know, send my portfolio out sometimes. And, uh, so my first manga was actually Yoi. Because this uh, American publisher called Yoi Press, they, they had it for real. Because Yoi probably generally have a stand, slightly lower standard. Uh, so that, that's my first job because um, yeah, it's easier for me to get in and I do like Yoi. And, and then, you know, with that book, I, I, I kind of uh, went to some French publishers, uh, Double, Darkport, and uh, they, they, they gave me a book to do each. So that's a good start, lucky. And then, yeah, and then just uh, over the years, gradually I started to work with uh, some big American publishers. Sometimes I, I work for and uh, some British publishers or so agent, my agent always gave me like little children books as well. So that's, that's what it's now. <laughs> what about the portrait? Because I saw you then yesterday sketching some portraits. Yeah. How did this came out to you? Oh, because, um, so because see, you know, because normally the convention I go to like a uh, uh, comic house, not like a manga club. I go to a lot of comic house. The part of comic con is, um, people wanted me to draw like Superman, Spider-Man, and uh, I'm not really good at it. <laughs> I can do it. it just, She's honest though, huh? Yeah, but it's like a fit man. I don't really do well on that part. So, um, so I came out with the idea and just like, you know what, I just draw your face. That'll be easier for both of us. You can have that on the wall. You can remember how pretty you were. And uh, that saved me some time as well. So it's all started there. Yeah, but I don't think that making people's portraits from the face is not that easy. Maybe it's easy to you, but yeah. in most of us, at least of me, when we use this, to be honest, it's really it, great. It's, it's shocking that in this time of, you know, photography, camera and stuff like that, people still want their face to be drawn. That's quite nice. And uh, what about you, Bonami? Okay, um, well I guess the, the main reason why I, I wanted to do, uh, to tell good stories, manga stories or, or comic book stories is because um, when I was younger, this, these uh, stories I saw on TV, I read in books were really like um, kind of a, a, a reference so, so that I, I could see that um, when you're in tough situations, when uh, you don't know what the solution can be, there, are, there can always be a solution. There is always a different angle for looking at things. And there are many things to discover, many people to talk with that you think you know, but you don't know. So it's this, this whole idea of discovering things and to, to share that knowledge with people, younger people who still have lot, lots to discover, a lot to learn. And, a lot of mistakes to make, and making mistakes is, is, not a, is not a problem. Making mistakes is how people grow, I think. So that's, that's really what drives me forward, is to find stories where people can see that even if, if what's outside uh, in the world seems tough, seems to be impossible to overcome, by, you know, getting interested in others, getting interested in what's inside of you, and, and building something, making something, even if it doesn't work at first, you try a second time, a third time, a tenth time, you know, you keep doing it. Uh, eventually, people will understand what you're trying to do, what you're trying to say, and it will be an occasion to exchange with them and to, you know, be part of society and contribute to everybody else's uh, wellness and everything. So that's what I like about stories, and also it's cool to draw, so I want to, to do something cool. <laughs> I know you make, you make cool things. I already have one. one. My favorite link. Yeah, you got so it's yours. <laughs> so I was about to ask, did you go to uh, a comic school? Um, no, but um, uh, I, I went to, I did English studies. Um, often when you, when you finish your 
your school, you, you're not sure what you want to do afterwards. Uh, you, sometimes you try something, I did two years law, I didn't turn out like, uh, was okay, but I didn't want to do law. So I came back to English, which was a language I liked, and I, I did English studies, but at the same time, I wanted to draw, but, you know, your parents sometimes, they say, drawing, it's difficult, and they're right. So I had to work on my own to improve. And uh, now it's very common, but uh, at the time, it was the beginning of uh, forums, where you could show your work, and you had the, the opinion of professionals or other artists. And, and I didn't go to a school, but that was, a very big help to help me have a, a look at my work and have advice and be able to understand why it didn't work, what I should do to improve, and also to see that there are other people that, that were trying to do the same and they were struggling as well, and they, they all had the same story that uh, it takes time to become a good artist and it takes a lot, a lot of work all the time it looks easy, but it looks easy yeah, because I mean, of the it, work it is, it is quite hard. I think it's, it looks easy at all. Yeah, it, it, it takes years. And it, it's, we, we had a couple of people who came to us this weekend asking, how do I be a professional artist? Well, actually, there is no shortcut. It's just, you just have to keep doing it. I mean, you've been doing it for probably 30 years. Uh, yes, like, like, like yeah, I, let's say I've become a professional, like, uh, 13 years ago, 14 years ago. So, so yeah, it, it takes time. And what's interesting is that um, there are steps. Uh, at the beginning, you don't know how to draw, and then you start. You start to become able to draw something, and people say, "Oh, that's cool, and that's good." And then you will move to the next circle, and there people will be more critical, more professional. And say, oh, "It's not good enough yet." So you start thinking, "Okay, so is it good? Is it not good?" You don't really know. So it's just a matter of steps. You, you get to the next, next stage, just like a, a tower you have to climb, and the, the, the bosses become bigger and bigger and, and more and more badass. And you have to, okay, I can I can find I can find this boss. Okay, oh next boss is, is twice as, as good as the, the first one. My God, what am I going to do? Do I go back? Do I climb down the, the, the tower? But it's your tower, so there is no point. You have to go to the top. So you fight, you take blows, you fall. You raise and and that's yeah. I mean, like the, the, the whole point of it is, is like yeah. you don't have to, you know, you love what you do. Mm -hmm. So if you, you go on holiday, you want to bring that sketchbook and keep on drawing because that's how where your passion is. So exactly. it's easy to improve over time. Yeah, this guy was roaming around the city. I found him in Tamara drawing. <laughs> It's a, a typical uh, French artist. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about manga. I'm not gonna ask you if you love manga. Okay, you are in an, anime, in an anime corner, of course you love manga. But I would like to know, probably our audience would like to know, what's going on with manga in your countries? What? In, in your countries? Okay, okay. Is there any success? Mm. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, where okay. do you think that uh, this success comes from, from which it derives from? from? Okay, um, I would say it's always a, 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 a matter also of um, people being aware that manga exists. So you need to have a market, let's say, uh, that will buy the mangas for publishers to decide that there is uh, enough potential to get their money back somehow. Um, and then it's the quality of the stories, of course. Uh, you have to get good. You have to to have good stories uh, for a series to, to go on. So in France, there, there is a big manga market because comic books are usual in, in France, and uh, so there has been a lot of importation of uh, foreign mangas, Japanese mangas, mainly, but also Korean manga. Uh, we have very good Korean manga as well that, that are called manhwa. A, f a few Chinese uh, manga also uh, that are pretty cool, um, and uh, f recently they are also starting to uh, appear French mangas. That is, uh, editors are taking the risk of uh, financing uh, French artists to do manga, um, and uh, well, it's usually very talented artists who are, who are very productive because manga usually in Japan is made by teams of people. 
Uh, and in France, usually the teams are smaller, so they really have to be uh, uh, tough to be able to do it. Um, but you have now you really have quality uh, French manga as well, and some of them have even been published in Japan, and they have a reasonable success, which is something quite uh, really good because uh, usually Japan throws things outside, it doesn't take much thing inside. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they have the so same that's, that's, uh, that's quite proof of the quality. It's equal standards, different stories, but uh, yeah, manga is uh, the good thing about manga. You all know that is that in a small volume you have a lot of story. It's very rich, lots of characters. So it's uh, so many. You really get into it. Uh, the, the, the characters become as if they were your friends. You know them. Uh, to tell you a story, for instance, on my computer I have several uh, hard disks uh, for my work, and I've, I've given the names I've given to the, the disk are all names of characters from the mangas I like. So, you know, they're, they're family now, <laughs> of course. This is Lisa. Okay. She wants to talk about back. But okay, okay. I, I think everyone wants to listen to you guys because you have so different perspective. It's, it's like it's changing opinions, it's really something good for the whole manga community, right? So, the whole manga my movie. crazy Chinese girl. Right, um, so which country do you want to hear about? Uh, the UK or China? Well, both. You've been living for 10 years again, am I right? You're 10 years now? Yeah, but again? I still don't still know it, so as a... Let's say, let's say uh, UK first. UK yeah, let's start from UK, then we can go to the other side of the world to China. Yeah, yeah. So in the UK is um, it's not much. You say uh, it's, it's no publisher actually will take out manga as in France because in France is the whole you know comic industry is there. But in UK it's always with American uh, publishers. So there's not really any manga getting published in UK, but what we do have is a special, um, it's like there's some massive manga conventions happening all around the world, uh, sorry, all around the country at the moment, and um, there's a, a solid fan base, and uh, there's a lot of self-published uh, material, and uh, there's some uh, groups of manga artists, like, you know, not professional, but they are good enough. So they, they are groups who uh, self-publish, so you don't have to draw a whole book, instead you draw a chapter. So they, you know, because they all have other job to do. And um, yeah, that's pretty much about the UK market. I think UK market problem is, I don't know about the French market, I think he, the, the UK manga market is already going Kind of uh, plateau. It's, That's right. it's not gonna go it's, up. It's stuck. It's so something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of for, slow down. For what I know, manga is a, a quite a good portion of, of comic books sold in France in general. It's really popular. Yeah. Uh, now, is it rising or going down, or is, is it stable? I don't really know. Uh, I'm not a specialist on that. Uh, in fact, okay. But it's it's really popular. It sells well. Yeah, but is it getting popular year by year during the time? And so if something gets popular, well, you know, is that it's it, it, it can't just keep going up anyway. So yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's popular. Normal. It's, it's still very popular, right? And so at the other hand, uh, talking about Chinese market, it's a totally different concept of manga because what they do, they do magazines. But not what you think the Japanese one with the big format because they uh, in Chinese one they generally put four pages in a page and they are all colored and when it's popular now they, they put it in books so it's actually very big business at the moment very big business and then the, uh, the topic China goes, business in China yeah that's the thing it's it, it's a lot of money in there because once you sell you're talking about you're selling a hundred a hundred thousand copies. You are talking about ten thousand copies, a lot. But you have to have a big team because they are there. There, some magazines are like uh, bi-weekly, bi-weekly, bi -weekly. Week, all weekly. 
you know, like, uh -huh. if you're popular, you're gonna go, you, you're gonna need a studio of, like, 30 people. To How many pages in? It's only about every, every week, you probably get about 20 odd pages. How many? 20 something. 20 pages uh, a week? Yeah, and also at the studio, you're gonna have, you're gonna have several stories running on different platforms. So you're talking about 100 pages a week. So that's why you hire 30 people to do it. <laughs> Really, quite impressive. Uh, let's talk about mangagas. Your, your mangagas, but there are mangagas that probably you would like to meet or cooperate with them. And mangagas. Mangaga artists. Mangaga Manga artists. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is there anyone that you would like to meet and even cooperate with him? To work alongside with him, make a project. So, um, sure who would you want to work with, or, or you know, anyone that you would like to meet, or to meet person, or even work with you, work with. make a costume, make a project? Uh, well, there are of course many artists that we all know, like uh, Ishiro Oda for uh, One Piece, uh, uh, like uh, Kishimoto for uh, Naruto and so on. Uh, there is a, an artist, a uh, manga artist that I really admire, that's a little less known uh, sometimes, I feel. Uh, it's uh, Yoshiro Togashi, who did uh, Hunter x Hunter, and also Yu Yu Hakusho uh, before. And for me, Hunter x Hunter is a great manga because um, two, two key things, I'd say. Um, everybody has his place in, uh, in Hunter x Hunter. Uh, you don't have bad guys, good guys, everybody is unique. Everybody is kind of weird in its own manner, but everyone has a style that he prefers or uh, a type that, yeah. he, that likes most. So we are taking that path, or we are we're more eager to meet, for example, one artist yeah. or something like this. We don't. No one has the same. What's that we say? The same. Uh, the same personality, the same identity. Yeah, we don't have, no one has the same taste. Yeah, have other tastes, you have other tastes. That's why yeah, I sure. made that question to you, because I want to let the people, our audience, know what kind of uh, okay. artists would you like to work with. Okay. Me? Yeah. I'm going to ask you. I can't, I cannot imagine to work in Japan, because... That is just way too hard. I love my holidays, love my weekends. I just, that, that idea alone, it just made me go, no way. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's honest, it's honest. So would you like to share uh, some uh, future plans, some of uh, your projects that you are going to present to the audience, to the world, because you are not, just an artist for France, you are an artist for all of the world. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Right, so I'm doing, I'm still doing Buffy, the, the graphic oval. So the the second and third one are going to come out. I'm working on the third one at the moment. So that's going to come out early next year. And uh, also I'm working on Barbie. Barbie? Yeah, it's actually incredibly hard to draw. Gorizia Gute Barbie. Because it's a certain style and she has to move like plastic. That's the thing, that's horrible to draw because you, have to, you draw real people and then now you have to draw, okay, how does it... Because when you look at it, it looks weird. But you have to go along with it. Yeah, so and also I'm working on... Uh, you can see on my table, Paradox. So it's a new chart. Yeah, it's a good challenge. Why not? You know, it's interesting. <laughs> I'm hoping we'll get a free merchandise. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and also uh, Paradox Girl, which is on my table right now. We uh, we found it earlier uh, this year on Kickstarter. So our aim was um, yes, yeah, on my table. Uh, we aim at ten thousand dollars. We got like thirty six. I don't So uh, we're gonna have the next three books out in November. Uh, that's to, to do another Kickstarter to, to find that one. So that's the next big thing. Because I don't normally work with a small publisher, but you know, I really love the story. It's fantastic. Great. 
Uh, well, right now I'm working on the book three of my current series, uh, Golan. Uh, that will be out in May or June of next year. Um, just for you to know, they, they also started uh, translating uh, the, 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 the comic uh, in English uh, on the internet. Yeah, it's in French, uh, so but they are starting to translate it uh, online. And uh, I also have another project that I'm trying to develop with a rap artist I've been working with, uh, with whom I've done uh, his covers for his CDs. And we're doing a story about uh, medieval Japan and uh, with a very um, fantastic twist, uh, like with creatures, story about death. Um, um, not too many characters, but very charismatic, very dynamic. Uh, Lots of things uh, we want to do in that. It's more mature than what I'm doing now. But I'm really looking forward to completing that and starting doing the pages because uh, the story has really good potential. So that will be next. It sounds impressive to me. And also, of course, I forgot the uh, on Golam we are about to start also on the animation, the TV series. So. Can you discover, can you disclose the, the name of the TV series, or well, is it a big secret? No, it will probably be the, the same title as the uh, as the comic book I'm working on. Ah, it's going to be going on. Yeah, they were going, they're going to take it as a as a TV series. So at least we are we are starting to do the uh, the pilots and to build uh, the universe because it, it will happen like uh, a couple years, like ten years or fifteen years after the uh, after the, the story of the comic. And uh, with new characters, but also the old characters will be here. And uh, well, it, it's a pretty exciting uh, perspective experience. First time I will be really working on my uh, characters in a TV series. So looking forward to doing that. And well, we'll be mm, telling people how it advances when it's more concrete. Uh, but probably at the beginning of, of next year, there will be things to be seen and to be shown. I'm pretty sure that your projects are going to be a huge success, I don't know, because you are so dedicated to what you are doing, guys, and uh, just continue what you are doing, because you are doing an amazing job. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Nicolas Saz, Iggy Sanlin, the Peretero. Προφορίες, μπορείτε και εσείς να πάτε για να μιλήσετε μαζί τους, δείτε τα έργα τους, μιλήσετε μαζί τους, πιστέψτε με, είναι εξαιρετικοί καλλιτέχνες. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. This is my crazy Chinese friend. And this is... This guy, I love this guy. He has a great sense of humor. And I have a photo that I'm not going to show to everyone. Okay. No, I'm not going to show it. It will be your embarrassment day in Greece. Thank you so much. Λοιπόν, σε λίγο συνεχίζουμε, θα έχουμε άλλη μία συνέντευξη. Ε, στη συνέντευξη αυτή θα έχουμε τους διοργανωτές του ΡΑΤ Θεσσαλονίκη Ανημεκό, που δεν είναι ένα άλλο από τους Manga Tellers. Είναι οι δημιουργοί, οι πραγματικά εγώ το τραγνώσω στην παιδιά εξεπλάγει, διότι δεν είχα ακούσει ποτέ για έννοιξη εδώ, για Έλληνες δημιουργούς Manga και είναι μια καλή ευκαιρία για όσους τους γνωρίζετε, να τους γνωρίζετε από κοντά και θα έχουμε μαζί μας και τον Λουί, ο οποίος Λουί είναι ο σκητσογράφος τους και έρχεται από την Πορτογαλία. Τα λέμε σε λίγα λεπτά.